Welcome to my quick introduction to a uh, YouTube movie on thin film interference. It's the best visual presentation of what's happening in thin film interference. Uh, it's one of those things, it's a little bit like two-dimensional interference where you really have to have a good concept and a good picture of what's going on to be able to understand how the math works. Now, the, uh, I'd like to show you one of the first uh, portions of the movie shows you this image, which it doesn't explain, but what this is is a ring that has been dipped in soap, like uh, bubble soap. And so you've got this thin film. Uh, over time, it sags and becomes thinner at the top and thicker at the bottom. And if you shine light on it, because of the different thicknesses of the film, you get this banding effect which you should recognize as a consequence of some sort of interference. And that's what we're going to explain mathematically in the class and what the movie is going to show you uh, essentially conceptually to help you get an idea for what's happening. I'm going to zip ahead to about a minute into the movie uh, uh, where you get to this representation right here, this. And uh, this is actually showing the situation with something like the... Um, like the thin film of the soap film, where you have air indicated on the outside having a index of refraction, you can kind of see, of one. Then you can kind of see the material itself, let's say it's um, water with soap in it, having an index of refraction, something like this. And then the, the inside of the bubble is back to air, and you have an index of refraction, something like this. Now the question is, is why do we care about index of refractions with this problem? Well, the basic setup, what's essentially happening in this, my, my little drawing here hopefully will help you understand the animations that you're going to see in this movie, is what you have is you have light coming in and striking the surface of the um, thin film of the bubble. Now what happens is some of this light is reflected and comes off in this direction, if you wanted to think about it, the observer would be uh, in this location, outside of the bubble. So you could kind of think of somebody's eye, like right here, looking at this. They would see light reflected off the surface of the film. But you know that some of the light is also transmitted, and that light continues into the inner surface, where again it meets a boundary and also gets reflected. And you so, so you see that the the uh, eye actually receives not one, but two beams, one reflected off the outside of the bubble and one off the inside of the bubble. And the fact that you're getting two rays like this um, suggests that there's a possibility, at least, for some interference. And that's what the lab talks about, or the movie talks about. Okay, so in this case, why do we care about index of refraction? Index of refraction, remember, is associated with the speed of light. In other words, an index of refraction of 1 means light has its regular speed, and an index of refraction, let's say, of this 1.5 means it's, uh, it's, uh, it's c divided by 1.5. In other words, it's a slower speed. Now, this is where this is one of the key factors that you have to understand in doing these um, problems with thin film interference. At this boundary location, in other words, at this, let's look at this location right here, which is the first reflection. Remember from uh, about three weeks ago, when we took a pulse and we sent it towards a boundary, we did this with springs. Some of the portion of the wave was transmitted, and it was not affected uh, in other words, it, when the wave slowed down, it did not cause a phase shift, in other words, any kind of a change in the shape of the wave. However, the reflected wave could experience a phase shift. Now, in this case right here, where you have incoming light hitting something where the light slows down, what that means is this boundary right here, this first boundary, acts like a hard or a fixed boundary. Which means this, this first ray, when the first ray is reflected, it is reflected and it is also phase shifted by 180 degrees. Now, the, the movie, what the movie is going to do to show this 
is they're going to mark the reflected rays with an R, but if the ray happens to be inverted when it's reflected, they're going to just invert the R, something like this. Okay? So this takes us back three weeks to looking at the uh, transmission of a wave at a boundary. Now the uh, let's take a look at the second boundary. In other words, when we get to the when the light um, transmitted light gets to this back boundary, the same sort of a thing happens. You get a reflection. Uh, the reflection can cause a phase change or a flip in the wave. In this case, it's going from fast. In other words, the one point, or I'm sorry, from slow to fast. In other words, it's speeding up. That acts like a loose end, and a loose end does not phase shift the wave. The wave comes off in the same direction, and you can kind of see that this wave is not inverted because of the reflection. So right off the bat, you see at least one factor that might affect constructive or destructive interference. If you have one of these light waves is shifted by 180 degrees, in other words, it's phase shifted or it's flipped, and it adds with an unflipped wave, you would expect to see uh, destructive interference. Now it's more complicated than that, but that's the first thing you have to understand, and that is the reason that we take a look at um, ends or index of refraction. It has to do with the speed of light in the medium. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a little bit of a gouge on this. You don't have to memorize this, but it can kind of help. Uh, one way to look at this is this. If you look at the uh, first, I'm going to look at the first inter face right here and look at these end values. If it goes from low to high um, index of refraction, low to high means high phase shift. In other words, inverted. Okay? So low to high, high phase shift. You, get, uh, you probably get where I'm going here. This is just a little bit of a gouge. Once you understand what's going on here, this might help you do this a little bit faster. At the next interface, I go from high to low. High to low means low phase shift in that reflection. And notice low means no phase shift at all, and that's how I've gotten that. So when you're working these problems, there's lots of different setups for the problems, but that high to low or low to high might help you decide on the direct on the um, whether or not the waves are phase shifted. Now, the other thing that's going to determine whether the person, the viewer, sees a constructive or destructive interference or something in, in between is also going to be predicated not just on whether the two waves, the two light rays are phase shifted, but also whether they travel the same distance. Now this is the key, one of the other keys with thin film interference. Notice this, that the uh, wave that goes into and out of the film is reflected. It travels in, in other words, to, to the back surface, then back out again, something like this. So it has got a path length difference with the other wave, the one that's reflected off the top surface of the film. And you can kind of see here that that path length difference is going to equal twice the thickness of the film. And if that delta D, in this case, if the two rays are out of phase and the path length difference, in other words twice my thickness, is any multiple of a wavelength. You can see that these things, in other words, if this is equal to a wavelength or two wavelengths or, uh, or three wavelengths, you can see that these things are going to remain out of phase and they're going to be destructive interference. In other words, nothing's going to change if the path length difference between those two rays, one coming off the front of the, gla of the film and the other off the bottom of the film, the back of the film, uh, is separated by one wavelength, there is not going to be any additional phase shift. But if these thicknesses are such that they are one half of a wavelength, 
or one and one half wavelengths or two and one half wavelengths. You can see since this is a includes a half wavelength, it would by itself shift the two waves by half of a wavelength. Meaning that in this case right here, this example, the two waves are shifted by half a wavelength and you shift them by another half of a wavelength and now they're back in phase and it's constructive interference. And you can kind of see this situation uh, involves both this idea of phase shifting because of reflection and phase shift because of the extra distance one of the waves travel. You're going to have to keep both of those factors in mind as you watch the video and you work the problems. The last complication I would like to talk about is this. These wavelengths that we were just talking about, for instance, let's say a wavelength of uh, three and one half wavelengths, would, would put these two waves back in phase and give you constructive interference. Now the question is this, what wavelength is it? In other words, in this case, is it the wavelength uh, that the uh, uh, light experiences in air, or is it the wavelength in the fluid? Notice that in this case they're not going to be the same. We remember that velocity, in this case the velocity of light, is equal to the frequency times the wavelength. When the light wave changes medium, the frequency does not change. So in this case, the velocity decreases when it goes into the film. The wavelength will have to decrease as well. And notice, because it's the gap, it's uh, we're measuring our delta d here in between those two markers. Uh, uh, based on the thickness of the film, we need the wavelength uh, in this, it would be this region too. This is, the, this is the location that we care about the wavelength. What that means often with these problems is you end up having to calculate the wavelength. They'll give you, let's say, the wavelength of light in air, but we don't care about the wavelength in air. We have to have the wavelength in the film. And Multiples of that wavelength taken into account with the phase shifts because of the two reflections, when you add all of those factors together, you'll be able to predict whether you have constructive or destructive interference for different thicknesses of film. Now, I've taken twice as long as the actual movie takes, but the movie goes pretty fast. So hopefully this little tutorial will help you, and then you can take your time with the movie, maybe watch it once or twice, back it up, take it forward, notice what changes she's making in the uh, diagram. And when you come to class, you'll be ready for our lab on thin film interference. Thank you very much for joining me.